Hello and welcome to the Premier Suite here at the LD Nutrition Stadium. Thank you for joining us for over the next two hours and we'll look back over what will be a memorable 2019 season for Featherstone Rovers. My name's Joanne Fitzpatrick and I'm delighted to say I'm joined by head coach Ryan Carr. Welcome Ryan. Thanks for having me Joe. That's no problem. Let's wind right back to the beginning then. Let's go back almost 12 months, late 2018. You were there back in Australia and uh, Mark Campbell got in touch with you. How did all that come about? Yeah, it was a sort of, um, it was a weird, weird uh, catch up. We sort of out of the blue and I sort of caught up with, with Mark at a, at a cafe there in, near where I live in the Sutherland Shire. Um, it was nice and warm back then when he was over. So uh, we had a coffee. Uh, he sort of told me a little bit about the club and um, filled me in on it. It might have been an opportunity here to come over and coach over here and um, I was looking for an opportunity, so yeah, it was sort of weird timing, but perfect timing in that in that regard for me and, and my family. And um, talked to my wife that night, and about 48 hours later, I'd signed a deal, and we're, we're coming over here. So it was quick as very quick. Um, so you were you looking for a coaching job at the time? Uh, what were you doing at that point professionally? Yeah, I, I just finished coaching up with Canberra. Uh, I was coaching the Mounties in the New South Wales Cup there, and also working in, down with the Raiders down there in Canberra. So. Um, I was living away from home most of the week to work down there, so the sort of the fit. Whilst I love the club and the opportunity down there was great, and I love working under Ricky Stewart, um, I was sort of looking for an opportunity um, where I could be more closer to my family uh, on a permanent basis. So um, when Mark, when I met up with Mark and Rich Agar over there in Australia, they sort of described to me the opportunity in the championship and the Rovers and, and what this what this team means to this town and. Um, yeah, I, was, I sort of jumped at it after that. So what was your knowledge about England and the English Rugby League setup? Uh, not a lot, not a lot. I, obviously, I'd followed the Super League because I'm a pretty keen rugby league nerd. Um, I like watching as much footy as I can and learning as much as I can, but I didn't know a great deal about the championship. Uh, whilst, whilst I had a few mates that had come over and played in it, I didn't know a heap about it, so I sort of went home and did a bit of research after I'd spoken to Mark and, and dove into the Rovers and the competition in general and um, yeah, having their own identity is something that, that really uh, grabbed me, you know, in Australia in the, the tier below the top tier is sort of very much a second division uh, competition whereas over here every club has got their own identity, their own fan base, their own culture, their own, you know, their own history which is something that excited me and um, yeah, I, I, when I found out, you know, exactly how big this competition was and how how big this club was within that competition, I was I was extremely excited to get over here and coach. So you'd made that decision, that kind of very quick decision with your family, with the support of your family, uh, within that 48 hours time scale, and uh, you knew the situation of about nine players here at Featherstone Rovers, um, and we'd got. Paul March and Greg Stebbins uh, looking after the coaching here back in the depths of winter in, in yeah. Featherstone. And you were kind of overseeing the coaching by Skype at the time. What was that like? A bit of a challenge? Yeah, I, I didn't quite know we only had nine players at the time when I took the job. Um, figured that out along the way. But um, yeah, sort of got introduced to, to Paul and Greg via, um, via Skype and uh, met them over the phone for the first time and then w we quickly formed a really good relationship, us three. And um, I must say, without having them two here from, from those early days and, and throughout this season, the help that they've given me in this club is is enormous and we definitely wouldn't have even had a team if it wasn't for them two guys and they kept everything afloat here. And I couldn't be thankful enough to them for everything they've done for me and, and this team and this club. Um, and they deserve you know, probably more gratitude than anyone here, uh, certainly more than me because... The amount of work that they did when I wasn't here and even throughout the year when I was is just is, is enormous and um, they deserve all the all the credit really from my point of view. But sitting at home every night, I'd stay up till about, oh, I don't know, what, maybe 11, 12, 12 a.m., uh, maybe 1 a.m. sometimes and we'd sit there on Skype for about an hour or two every night and uh, we'd go through all the session plans, what I wanted them to do, what we needed to tick off in that certain session. Um, they'd film the sessions for me, send them back to me via email and I'd watch the session then I'd give them a call again and then go over some details and what we could, what we could do. It's, it's hard coaching via satellite but we made it work. We made it work in our own way even with a small squad and 
um, yeah, when you look back and you see what we managed to achieve this season and you think about all those things we went through, it just makes it all the more amazing and all the more special. It certainly does. And it was around Christmas time, wasn't it? And you had the challenge of getting yourself, uh, your wife and your young family over to England in quite a short space of time as well as doing that. So, so that would have been uh, a challenge too to, to do all that and come over and meet the players. Yeah, yeah. I, I was fortunate. I got to come over for a short, short time, a couple of days in, in December there just to meet um, everyone at the club and meet the playing group, the, the amount of people that were here at that time. Um, but then I, obviously I was just on a holiday then having a look around and uh, waiting for my visa to come through. My visa comes through on Christmas Day. So yeah, Christmas Day was a big one for us this year, or last year, sorry, and exciting, but challenging. And uh, I'm very, very appreciative to my wife uh, for all the sacrifices she's made for me because it's not easy doing what she's done with, with two young boys and just packing up our whole life and coming over here at such a, sh you know, the drop of a hat and if I didn't have her by my side, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So, yeah, very, very fortunate to have a, a very loving and caring wife who supports me. Um, and, and, yeah, if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And you came over here. Um, I remember interviewing you at, uh, in the Centre of Excellence in the training session. I think you'd have only been here a week or so, and it was freezing cold. It was dark. Uh, you'd got, and I, I remember you sitting down with the players, and it was your first talk with them all and uh, and it was great you know it was I thought oh yeah this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about <laughs> yeah well if you don't you just got to bluff your way through Joe so um, look yeah it was it was extremely cold extremely new everything was happening really fast for us and trying to build trying to build a, a whole DNA in such a short space of time because um, those who know me and you in particular, you would, you've known me from that first day to where we are now. You know how how I like things, and it's, it's I don't like to be airy fairy. I like to be very, very to the point and, and very specific with how I like things. And um, it was always going to be a challenge to to get everything together so quickly. But um, I was very fortunate to have a a great group of players, a great staff who everyone's bought into me and what I wanted to do and what we wanted to achieve at this club. And um, yeah. If we didn't have them all on board, we wouldn't have been able to do it so quickly, that's for sure. And the pre-season, it was a new thing for the Championship too. It was in the inaugural Yorkshire Cup with a selection of teams in there. Uh, and it was kind of a, a mixed bag of results, wasn't it? Some disappointing results where you'd got very young side out against Tunslet Park side and, yeah. uh, and then uh, some, some better results as well. So how, how was that experience, the pre-season? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I watched that first one against Cass. Um, away there, or was that Boxing Day maybe, or, or Christmas Eve, or uh, New Year's Eve, or something like that? And we got beat 50 something nil. And I remember just thinking to myself, oh, we're in for, <laughs> we're in for a, a lot of work here, you know. But um, we didn't win a pre season fixture. I got here for the last one against Leeds. Um, it was just a friendly here at home. But although we didn't win one, um, it proves that it's not what you do in the pre-season, it's what you do in season and more importantly how you get better through that season because if you would have said do you think you're going to be in a grand final a uh, million pound game about nine, ten months later after we lost that cast game away I would have said no and I think everyone would have said no but it just goes to speak volumes of what these players have done and managed to how they've improved and, and how they've got better as a team and um, yeah I'm, I'm extremely proud of the season that's been. So we went to the season proper. It was a tough opener uh, in February against Bradford Bulls. And Featherstone narrowly lost it and they should have won it, apart from a, a very debatable try from a, a future player for yeah. Featherstone Rovers, Dane Chisholm. Did he ever um, talk to you about uh, that try? No, nah, he better not. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, a bit ironic that he ended up, you know, being our starting half, but... Uh, it was a learning curve for me, that first game. I was obviously finding out that some of the calls don't go your way. <laughs> it's a lot of calls. Um, but yeah, look, freezing cold, muddy conditions, not a lot of footy being played. You couldn't play a lot of footy in the conditions. It was sort of a war of attrition. And look at the team that we run out in round one to the team that we put out in that grand final. And it's like a completely new team. You know, probably I would have said probably six or so were there out of that starting 17 that were there in the grand final. So it's, it's just a huge turnover of players. Um, very different looking team, but 
that Bradford game was one that I reckon is one that we got away, you know, it still, still hurts me to think of it, even though you know the outcome of where we got to, but um, look, they're a good team, they're a full-time team and it was always, we were always up against it, but uh, I was proud of them, I was proud of them every game. And then uh, there was a, a good win against Batley, came back and then the third fixture was against Lee Centurions, which was a bit of a needle fixture for Featherstone Rovers because it had the, the former coach, John Duffy, who left the club just prior to you coming. Um, so that was always going to be one of those fixtures, wasn't it, where, where there was a, a little bit of feeling behind it, let's say. Yeah, look, I, I try and... Something I try and do every game is, is you don't go in with emotion. I think if you play with emotion or you, you let the emotion get to you, it drags you away from your performance and, and the things that mean the most to you. So it was a bit of an emotional sort of game or a bit of a feeling to it. Big crowd, big atmosphere. Uh, it was a good contest, actually. We, we did quite well to be to be in front at half-time, I believe. And then um, disappointing to lose that one because I know how much that, mo- that one meant to the players and the club. But... Um, as it turns out, we, we got our we got our revenge in the back end of the year, <laughs> and that's what counts. So yeah, it was just a, a narrow defeat, wasn't it? Brad Day got simbined in in that one as well for a dangerous throw, and and was suspended two games later. And he would just come into the team for as a new signing, hadn't he? Uh, in in that at the beginning of the year, did that have any effect on the result? The simbin in? Oh look, when you lose a player for ten minutes, it obviously takes the the steam out of you and I think you know getting run down in the back end of that half um, probably, probably hurt us but I think we learnt a lot in those sort of games especially that league game about what we did wrong and what what we needed to do to get better as a team and, and we sort of knew it but having to go through those hard experiences and, and get beat is, is what brings you out the other side and, and eventually I would have, I'd argue that when we went to Lee in that, that final you know all the way at the end of the year there I think we're a very different team because of that experience in that round three fixture. So um, I'm glad we went through it. I'm not glad we lost because I love winning everything. But um, you've got to go through some tough times to, to come out the other side. And then great response in round four on the 24th of February against down here against Halifax. Um, and it was a, a, a fantastic win for the Rovers against one of their top five contenders. And uh, it, that game, it was a, a, a very foggy day. <laughs> I don't know if you remember it. And I do. I do yeah. <laughs> were you a bit worried? Because Featherston were ahead quite significantly at half time, and then the fog really did descend in the second half. Were you worried that it was going to get abandoned that game? Yeah, it was, it was funny. I, I'd never seen anything like it. And then about 20 minutes to go, Richard Marshall, who was the coach of Halifax at the time, come down. And I seen him talking to the, uh, the third official on the sideline. So I jumped straight out of the box and I ran straight down the sideline. I stood right there too because I'm like, there's no way you're calling this game. We're up by 40. And I'm like, there is no way this is a result that should get taken away from us um, in a game that meant so much to us bouncing back from Lee. So, yeah, I remember I told March, yes, I'm coming down here. So I went down, I stood down there and I just stood right next to him. And if anything propped up, I was ready to fire. But fortunately, uh, common sense prevailed. The, the result was, was done and buried by the time that it got to a point where it was really bad. Um, so yeah, I was glad. To, I was glad that they let the game go on because we, we needed that two points at the time. That was for sure. We certainly did. And Harry Newman and Luke Briscoe both got a brace of tries in that game. Um, the, the, part of the dual reg uh, arrangement with Leeds Rhinos at Featherstone Rovers have. How? What were your assessment of those two players during as, during the season when they played? Yeah, they were great. Look, all the dual reg players that we had this year were fantastic. And, you know, whether they were here for a game or, or here for most of the season, I, I couldn't speak highly enough of all of them. They come back with a great attitude. They wanted to win. They wanted to play for this team. Um, I know it's hard. It's a hard scenario sometimes for people getting out of first team in Super League and coming back here. But I don't ever feel as though any of the players that came back treated it as though it was a, anything less than what it should have been or what it deserved to be treated as. And um, we had quite a fair few dual reg players at any given time throughout the year and um, Briscoe played a lot of the games here for us and he's played a, uh, played a lot of footy here for Feb so he's great Luke, um, the boys love playing with him and, and same with Harry, Harry's still even up to the grand final this year he's asking oh, do I qualify, can I come back and play so it goes to show you what it means to them, they enjoy playing here, they enjoy playing with this team and this group of players and um, you know if we didn't have them at the, especially this year in particular, if we didn't have, I know people are critical of the relationship, critical of the whole setup, but reality is if we didn't have dual reg this year, we wouldn't have had a team some game. So just for the circumstances we're in. So yeah, really, really thankful to those guys and really grateful to have um, them coming back with such a great attitude.
And it gives an opportunity for those players uh, when they won't be getting that first game experience of, of being in a really tough championship, a tough league to get experience. Yeah, definitely. Playing against men, a lot of them are, are kids when they come out of that sort of academy set up and to play against men and play in a, you know, it's really physical, the championship, I'd probably argue that uh, Super League's quite fast and obviously there's a lot of great players in that competition, but the, the speed that this gets played at is a bit slower, but it makes it a little bit more physical. <laughs> People are probably offside a little bit more and you can get away with a little bit more in the ruck and things like that. So it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good setup. It's a good setup for developing players and, and giving them a pathway to, to, to make the best out of their career. And after that, that game against Halifax, uh, the next three games, there was a Widness away game where Widness were motivated. They'd come on the back of a a bit of a torrid time for them where they'd gone into administration and it was, you could argue it was a little bit of a reaction from those witness players was that game uh, to beat Featherston. It was a, quite a tough one. That was the perfect storm we walked into there. Look, it was a great atmosphere and it was great to be part of, you know, seeing a club that's been around for so long, you know, get out of the tough times and, and be playing again was something, it was, it was great to be a part of it from that regard because you never want to see anyone go through tough times like that. But... The fact that they worked their way out of it and, and we were there to celebrate it with them by playing, although we were on the wrong side of it. and um, it looked, The atmosphere was great, the crowd was loud, it was big, it was, it was a good part. It was a good spectacle to be a part of, but just one of those days where everything, I think we dropped the first kick off um, and they scored in the first set and then sort of steamrolled out of there and they got a lot of momentum and we struggled to stop it. And again, you've got to go through those days and unfortunately that was one that we don't want to remember, but... Um, yeah, fair play to witness and, and, and good on them for getting out of you know administration and, and all the hard, hard times that they endured and I was just happy to see them and their players get out of it and come out the other side. And the Rovers bounced back though in the next two rounds uh, they got a win against uh, again playoff rivals Sheffield Eagles and then away to Swinton uh, who came into great form uh, during the season and then in round eight, down here at, at the Rovers, um, there was a loss to Dewsbury Rams, um, quite unexpected. Uh, that must have been a hard one to take, that one. Yeah, look, any, any loss at home is hard to take, Joe. Um, that was another perfect storm, if, you are, if I was to be honest. Like, when you look at it and you really dissect the game like I do, and I watch it three or four times back, and you think, why did that go wrong? Like, there's not one game this year that we lost that the players didn't give 110% of their effort. They all tried extremely hard in all of those games. Um, if you look back at a couple of the tries in that game, you'd say if you asked them to do it again, I don't think they could have. But there were some moments in that game where we let ourselves down and we learnt from it and we were harsh on ourselves in, in our review of the game. And um, that, that's, that's a game that sticks out for me as, as, as a turning point in terms of where we're at as a team and where we knew we needed to get better and there's a little bit of reality that sets in for some of the players and where they're at and um, again the team that run out against Dewsbury at home is definitely not the team that run out in the grand final is it so uh, a lot of turnover in players there but fair play to Dewsbury they, they took a lot of good teams you know they, they beat a lot of teams this year that they probably people on paper wouldn't have had them down to beat so I wouldn't say that there was any team in this competition this year that was a is an easy beat or a given. They're all hard games, and we found that out, which we'll talk about later on when we went to their place. It's they're a, they're a gritty team who try really hard, and um, they defend really well, and they play a really high completion game. Um, two experienced halfbacks in Finn Sykes, but look, I think to to break away from the stigma of we should be beating this team or we shouldn't be losing to this team, it's what does that mean? You know, it's rugby league. There's two teams that take the field on that given day, and um, there's no, you've got no right just by what jersey you got on or the name of your club compared to theirs. There's no right. No one's, it's never given to you and you've got to earn everything you get and that's something that I've tried to instill in this playing group this year. I don't care who we're playing. We've got to earn the win. We've got to earn the right to win and if we don't, then you're, you're a chance of getting beaten. Um, fair play to them. I thought they played a really good game on that day and we weren't at our best and we learned a lot. And you've just uh, mentioned uh, a couple of times about the, the teams that were playing in those rounds weren't like the one that was in that million pound game, uh, the grand final at the end. And uh, you, it's particularly, I think the, the, the thread of the season is around the halfback combinations that you had. Mm -hmm. So for that one, it was Reynolds and Boas. Yep. Um, you know, and it was one of many throughout the season. And that must have been a, a real challenge. Yeah, having 12 different sets of halves wasn't easy, um, especially being a, I was at halfback myself. So 
I like to think that they're, I like to coach them specifically and having such a high turnover, I was on the whiteboard nearly every night with them going through different plays and where we're doing and how we're trying to get there and um, look, I think Ben Ben's now at Lee and, and Watson's at Doncaster so it goes to show you where the different paths take you and um, you know to finish up with uh, Chiz and, and Cal there at the back end and had to have a little bit of consistency. It didn't matter to me who they were. I just wanted consistency because consistency gives you the opportunity to get better and build on things. But um, fair play to all of them. Every half combination that I had were all great, all great blokes. They all bought in and they all tried their best, which is all I can ask. And after that, um, we'd got a win in the Challenge Cup. So a little break from the league. Uh, that was at Swinton. Um, so... Um, We'll talk about the Challenge Cup in a bit, I think, when, when we talk about the Bradford game. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, and we'll go back to the, the Championship then at the beginning of April. You had a tough April because um, that first game in April was away at Toulouse. So you got that trip there. Yeah. How did you find that trip to the south of France? Uh, I mean, it was going to be first of many uh, overseas yeah. trips, but we, we weren't aware that that would be happening, I don't no, think. No, at the time we didn't. <laughs> Look, I, I sort of earmarked uh, our season out, and I sat down with Greg and, and Marchie, um, you know, just before round one, and I, I sort of had a look at all the fixtures on our whiteboard, and I said, "Look, guys, we're not going to really know where we're at as a team or what, who we are until round ten, which, funnily enough, was was that that Toulouse away trip. So um, that was the one we circled, and I said, "How we play that game will be a good indication of where we're at, because for me, that was our pre-season that we didn't get together as a team." So. Um, ten weeks of me being here and us being a team and everyone going along as normal. Um, I think it was a defining moment for us because we went there and although we didn't win, I, f I felt like we did. Um, we lost eight two on the yeah. day. Um, again, a couple of other bad calls by my mate. I won't go into that, but um, yeah, look, we got disallowed a couple of tries and they got awarded one that probably shouldn't have been, but. Regardless of the result, the way we played the game and the effort and the way we defended it, no one's kept Toulouse to, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, to eight points, one try yeah. in Toulouse. Like, they're a fantastic attacking team. And to manage to do that, um, even Toronto couldn't manage to do it, is, is something that I took a lot out of it from a defensive point of view. And the way they tried and the way they bought into what we were trying to build as our DNA was really come through in that game. And, and from there, I think you, our season took a really good turn and we were five from our first ten at that point in that game and I think we would have only lost a handful of games for the rest of the season beyond that. So, um, yeah, I was really pleased on that game. That was one that st stood out to me as something um, was a pretty special game for me because uh, the DNA that me and the other staff were trying to put into the boys really sh shone through in that game and um, I think that's why we, we got to where we did after that. And you speak about this DNA. Is that a, a really key thing for you? Um, that whoever's putting that jersey on, that's that's what the, the DNA that runs. Just explain a little bit more about that. Yeah. Look, we talk about our DNA, and it's something that you know runs inside of us and us only. And then in the, uh, we call it our little bubble in you know, over there in the training centre. And um, we try and keep out all the external noise, whether it's social media or whether it's articles or whatever it is because nothing matters other than our DNA and if we can all buy into the same thing and all be running by that DNA then we know we're going to give ourselves the best chance of winning and if we don't at least we can hold our head up high and say that we did it the right way and we did it our way and uh, for me having these players buy into it and they're the ones that created it and they're the ones that that keep building on that and that culture and driving it from within um, and it's something that means a lot to me and is important to me because um, I'm very much about the team and putting the team first and, and not having any excuses. If you're in that jersey that week or you're not or you don't get picked or someone you're injured and that, there's no excuses because our DNA will make sure that it'll overcome all the adversity and it'll overcome all the challenges if we're all in it together. And uh, that's something that is important to me as a coach and something that I try and instill in my, my players and my, my club. And I'm pretty thankful to say that I think the, the boys have done it this year. They built a really special DNA and a really special culture. And I think everyone, whether it be opposition or like, we do things the right way. And 
people, we're not, we don't want to be a team that people hate. We want to be a team that people respect and everyone wants to probably come and play for. And I think those players managed to do that this year. Yeah, I think they completely bought into it, didn't they? You know, uh, that the whole DNA thing. Um, and you could tell I was on that plane coming back from Toulouse with the players and, and yourself. And uh, you could tell it was almost like a defining moment in the season was their performance over there because it, it was a real test, wasn't it? In bad conditions, but, but they'd done well. Quick turnaround after that, though. It was the Challenge Cup, the next round against Bradford. Yeah. Um, and a narrow loss. It was a, a drop goal that, um, that it, well, it was golden point, wasn't it, yeah, that, it was uh, <laughs> that yeah. did it um, <laughs> by a certain someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, do you think, though, it was a blessing in disguise to go out of the Challenge Cup competition? Because when you look at Halifax and Bradford, yeah. when they went further in the Challenge Cup, They'd been going okay in the league until then, and then their season seemed to get derailed a little. Yeah, look, it's, it was a hard one because I'm not used to it. It's a new thing for me. Obviously, being from Australia, we don't have anything like the Challenge Cup, so it's a it's a really cool, exciting competition to be a part of. But I wasn't quite sure how to take it or how teams manage it and different things. But I know a lot of teams have the ability to rest players and manage their squad. We didn't have that. We just had to roll out who we had every week in every game. Um, looking back on it. I wanted to win it because I thought we deserved to win it. We'd done enough to win it. But uh, momentum got away from us in the back end there. And look, we, we, we didn't come away with the victory. But like you said, in hindsight, when you, when you think having those weekends off to rest bodies, which we desperately needed, uh, it was probably a blessing for the competition proper for us. And um, whilst everyone wants to win the Challenge Cup or do what Halifax did, yeah, it can, it can really take the sting out of you. And it's hard to to go to, to target both of them in a part-time club with, with a limited squad and um, yeah look it still hurts that game I wanted to win that one I'm not going to lie but especially Bradford you know after what they did to us in round one we definitely wanted to beat them there but um, it wasn't to be a couple of goal kicks from the sideline and different things like that it was again another perfect storm that you couldn't ride it you couldn't ride it but look it's probably a blessing in disguise put it that way well that's what we'll put it that way anyway make me feel better well, let's move on to Easter then. Um, the advent of the Easter weekend fixtures and it was a game against York, which we will show some highlights from first and then we'll go into some questions. I think it might have been a, a nice victory for you this yeah, one. Yeah, this would be good to watch this one. <laughs> Lockwood now takes it forward. He's five metres out as the last tackle's called from the ref. I'm guessing this will go to Chisholm. It does. He gets it out wide though to Sutcliffe, Sutcliffe going himself, Sutcliffe gets over in that left hand corner, great play by Chisholm, Chisholm it was shaping to kick there wasn't it? But Chisholm taking it across the line, gets it to Buss, this is nice play from Featherston, John Davis is through, he gets it away, down that right hand side to Render, he's looking, he's got Walters, Walters is over for a try, what a fabulous try from Featherston Rovers deep from in there half. Not, they've not been up here very long, they're getting it out to this left hand side with Marsh. Good defence again. He gets tackled just short of the Featherson try line. It's a short pass and uh, they're going through a York and they get the ball down. Couldn't quite see who it was who scored there for. I think it was Spazy. King to Chisholm. Gets it out to Bussy. Bussy almost gets it away to John Davis. A little bit like in the first half, but uh, last tackle's called. King. On the 10, gets it to Chisholm, who puts a little grubber kick through. It's all over, and Featherston collects it. And go in for the try. Alex Sutcliffe it is, who collects the ball. Dummy half. Gets it out of the back to Bussy. Bussy with the short pass to John Davis, who goes over the try line for Featherston Rovers and puts them further in the lead, 24 points to six. Here at the LD Nutrition Sat with him. King gets it out to Chisholm. Floating pass over the top to Josh Hardcastle. He's going for the line, and Josh Hardcastle Great gets try. over. Great try from him. I think Chisholm was taken out in back play there as well. He's on the floor. Yeah, like spread it all the way across. And yeah. again, all the way across. Going out to that left-hand side, Featherston are Chisholm. Oh, Getting hands. out to that left-hand side, and Featherston is through with Josh Hardcastle. He's going to go in great for his hands. second. Great hands. Yeah, lovely try coming from the Rovers. Yeah, on Jack Teamby. See that. Loose pass. It's been carried up. Picked up by Dane Chisholm. He's going to race away under the post for a debut chase. Dane Chisholm, look at him. Celebrate as he puts that ball down. He loves a bit of that, doesn't he? Nah, it's, a, it's a great play here. We called it earlier. As soon, as soon as you start getting in front, this York team will have to try and play. And 
Same again, I think Graham Horn comes to line, tried to throw the ball out back and nobody's there. Chizzy on hand, one handed pick up, bit of speed. These are things we're not, yeah. we're not forcing errors or forcing. Oh, nice oh, play nice. by Robinson that day, that was delightful. He's got Star him, play. JD's got him. JD's oh, he's oh, pulled, he's pulled up. up past John Davis, oh, that's dear. not good news. Oh dear. Chasing after Sam Scott, who eventually goes in for the try, but it's not good to see John Davis pull up like Rovers that. coming out victors here, a comprehensive victory here. They've, uh, as you've been saying, George, have been very impressive. It's been a really professional performance from these players out here. Matched around the field a little bit by Dane Chisholm, but it's also been a, a, a full 17 play. Well, uh, uh, those that have played the 16 player performance out there, hasn't it? And uh, forwards as well. I mean, the defensive effort's been immense. So, Good Friday fixture that against York. It was shown on the Our League app as well. So, a wider audience and a comprehensive victory. Good performance. Yeah, that was a really good one. I mean, there was a lot of build up to that game. Uh, York were obviously having a, a really good start to the year, and there was a, a lot of anticipation on how we'd react here at home. And um, Dane Chisholm's first game and different things like another, another change, but. Uh, yeah, it was a really good one that day. It was a special one, a big crowd here on Good Friday, obviously, and uh, to put a good performance together for our fans at home here was something something pretty special and something the boys would be really proud of. Tell us about that Dane Chisholm signing then. It was his debut game for Featherstone Rovers and he, he turned on uh, the special stuff, didn't he, in that game as well and, and instantly won fans. Uh, how did all that come about, the signing? Uh, I sort of just got... Mark sort of just said to me, what do, you, what do you think about Dane Chisholm? Sort of randomly, I was having a, a beer with him and he just said, um, what do you think about Chis? And I said, oh, look, I played with Chis back in Australia. I said, what's going on? Where's he at? I didn't know what was going on with Bradford and th things like that. So I gave him a call um, and... 24 hours later, he'd sign and he was here. So, um, yeah, spoke to him over the phone, told him what I was looking for and how, how I, what I was trying to do here with the team and what we were trying to do as a, as a team and a club. And, uh, yeah, he, he bought straight in and he said, yep, hung up the phone and said, no, nah, I want to do it. So, uh, really fortunate decision for us. And for him too, I think he'd be really pleased with his decision to come here. And um, it's nice when people make good moves all around. You know, it's good for everyone and it's good for both parties. But... Yeah, he had a huge influence on that game and, and a lot more uh, from what happened in the re back end of the year. He certainly did and uh, broke the record for the fastest century of points at this club as well that had yeah, been held yeah, a while. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it was uh, it set off uh, like a greyhound out of the traps, didn't he? Um, so that was the, the Good Friday fixture, a good one to get under your belt. Quick turnaround to Easter Monday then to another... <laughs> Tough game. I mean, April was a real tough, tough month, um, and that was against uh, the the league leaders, Toronto. And uh, what, what's your thoughts on these Easter fixtures? Uh, there's very, very differing thoughts. Um, I mean, in England, the fans absolutely love them, but uh, when the Aussies come over, they're kind of not not too enamoured with them. I'll probably get hammered for this, but I think they're ridiculous. <laughs> like, I just don't know how you can put players through that. Two games within a three or four day span. It's like, it's it's hard. It's hard on their bodies as it is doing a six day, seven day turnaround, let alone uh, a three a three day turnaround. So look, it's if you've got a big squad, yeah, okay, because you can turn your players over and that. But we we literally rolled the same team out from from that Friday on to the Monday, minus an injury or two. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit it's a bit ridiculous, but what do I know? I'm only, I'm the newbie over here, so uh, something that I'm definitely not used to. It's a bit foreign to me, but um, look, we bought into I bought into it. And you make the again, no excuses. Get on with it, do your job, and and I thought the boys did a fantastic job against Toronto on that Monday. You know, world class team, and uh, there's Super League and NRL players all over the team, and they've got all full time all the all the things that they're that they're blessing, and we. We just rolled up our sleeves and for all intents and purposes should have probably won the game. We're in front at the 75th minute. But again, another one that hurts a little bit because it would have been nice to beat them. I thought, I genuinely thought we deserved to beat them on that day. I thought we played better. We bombed four, four tries or something. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I want to talk about that one, Joe. <laughs> Well, let's just talk about one little bit of it because uh, we just had our, our season's awards and the try of the season came out of that game, didn't it, with Connor Carey. And it, it was a special try, wasn't it, with the Dane Chisholm step, the kick, and then how Connor Carey got that ball down just before it went dead. 
goodness knows it was almost inhuman. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't appreciate it until I seen it back because obviously watching it live, you think, oh, I hope you got it down. The ref gives it. That's all you care about. But when you watch it in slow motion and all the different angles, it's just a, it was a phenomenal effort. And yeah, it, was, it, it certainly did a, a deserved try of the year in my opinion, yeah. So let's move into May then. Um, after the, the Easter fixture, there was a little bit of a break, no, no Challenge Cup fixture. So, so that was probably really, really welcome for you, wasn't it? Um, and then it was a, a trip to Rochdale, which Featherstone won quite easily, a 46-point margin there. Um, you know, the, the, almost the basement club. But I think what you kept saying throughout the championship was, there were no easy fixtures were there and to go there and get that result must have been a good one yeah yeah it was it was a big one for us we we sort of needed to get a little bit of momentum after a good easter weekend although we only won one of the two we needed a a good win away from home um something that we we struggled with early in the year lot winning away from home and um we got a good win over there we played really well and i think you know go back to that toulouse away from that game on, especially York on, on Good Friday, which we just watched, uh, the way we played and the style we played and our brand started to really evolve. And I think in that Rochdale game, again, it went to a new level and the way we were moving the ball and attack and scoring some really nice tries. And um, that was something that was really pleasing to see that it was starting to really come along really quickly. Luke Cooper got two tries in that game. Uh, just a mention to Luke, he only missed one game all season, I do believe, and he's all, almost like a mainstay, isn't he, of the team? Yeah, he was. He had a great year, Luke. I know he uh, is probably the most consistent he's been. He's been here for a long time. He played his 100th game at the back end of the year there and uh, for the club, which is, which is a great uh, milestone for him. But, um, look, guys like Coops and, and a lot, I could mention a lot of other players, it's the things that they bring to the team is, again, comes back to that DNA and everyone contributes equally. It's never, I never want to be a team that, or we never wanted to be a team that relied on one or two people because as soon as you're relying on one or two superstars, then you're not a team anymore, are you? You're just individuals and guys like Coops epitomise that. He does a lot of good work for this team that people wouldn't see. They see all the all the fancy stuff, but all the hard work and all the defensive efforts that he does and a lot of our other forwards do is just something that um, we, we wanted to recognise throughout the year and um, all those effort areas is something that he does really well. And then let's move to Blackpool, go over the Pennines uh, for the Summer Bash uh, and we'll have a look at the highlights of that game against York. Ball's played 12 metres out away from that Featherstone line though and York looking dangerous here as they've got men and uh, oh. it's an interception by Dane Chisholm for Featherstone Rovers. Dane Chisholm is a foot race and he's going away and he is going to score under the post for Featherstone Rovers. Great spot by Dane Chisholm, but I think he's injured, you know. Is or, he or, not? He's, he's playing. Asleep. <laughs> Fantastic. I thought he was injured. <laughs> Looks as though quite surprised. Strolling. Lockwood. Lockwood back to King, King to Holmes, Holmes adds this right hand side to Highcastle and Kerr is going to go in for a try for Featherstone Rovers and look at Luke Cooper punching the air there, he makes me laugh so much when he does that uh, but yeah, nothing uh, given there, Lockwood not happy with that and oh, Dane Chisholm with a, a step looking for options, gets it out to Briscoe, it's one on one here, can Briscoe win? Yes he can, Briscoe goes in for the try just before half time Fabulous play by Dane Chisholm in the build-up there. Play the ball, yeah. comes to Harrison. Harrison with a great drive forward, great leg drive there. Escape the first tackle, takes it up to the 10. Looking for a quick play the ball. Cameron King, Holmes. Holmes with a pass yeah, out pass. to his right-hand side to Connor Carey. Carey's going to go in for his second. Lovely pass from Holmes. This is what we know and love about Tom Holmes. Yeah, he's, he's back with a bang this season. Obviously. Well, so Harrison and Norman Roy both being effective as Chisholm looks for the 40-20 here. I think he's going to get it. He does. Fantastic kick from Chisholm. Kicks it just before the 40. Goes in on the short. Team. King to Harrison. Back to King to Chisholm. Chisholm out to that left-hand side. Featherston going for the try there. I think they've got it. The half. Yeah, brilliant. Great try out there on that left-hand side. With two points here. No, I think the game's pretty much the better. They want to pile more. Yeah. More misery on the York defence. And here it goes. Featherston get over the line. Nice little pass from Chisholm. It's it, uh, Sutcliffe that's got over there. I think it is, isn't Good it? defence Alex? comes on him. He plays the ball quickly, though. It's out to Holmes. He tips it to Davis. Davis gives it to Hardcastle. Yes. The local boy scores. Featherston boy Josh Hardcastle goes in at this right-hand corner for the...
important for them to do that and uh, stop. Oh, and oh. It's, a, it's a mess there where it full by and Tom Holmes is going to race away for a try. It was a kick that came in from Chisholm and it was a real meal made of it. I think it was by Liam Harris, the full back. That'll be their number one objective now, I'd guess, as the high kick comes into the air. It's going to be taken by York Salter, it was. He gets it out and could be danger. York could get in and I think they do. Get in for a consolation try down on this left-hand side. <laughs> uh, but as we say Blackburn's up the uh, middle of the field here and I think he's going to score for York and oh, no, it's not Blackburn, it's Joe Porter Joe Porter gets over for York so a couple of late tries for York City Knights So Ryan, um, first win at Blackpool for Featherstone Rovers and it, it did mean a lot to the Featherstone Rovers fans that got to the stage where they the dreaded going to Blackpool so it was a really important win and uh, it got voted as champagne moment of the year as well did that game. Uh, what did it mean to you? Yeah, it meant a lot obviously for this, this, this playing group to bring you know the first summer bash win back to the club and to these fans who have gone out every year and supported and they continue to do it and we had such a great turnout again this year and um, being part of a big atmosphere and more importantly for uh, for me as a coach I, I was really happy for the players because we were in, f in front of everyone else too in that competition everyone's there watching you know they're all eyes are on the game and to really put our put our stamp on the competition and let everyone know because probably up until that point no one really took us quite seriously I, I wouldn't imagine and then to get a, a really strong win like that against the York team who, had, who was having a great year at the time and um, and played so well and, and just the boys were just clinical that day. Like the attack, the attack they they put together was was great to watch. It was just really good, good footy, and um, yeah, I was really pleased for the boys. It was a good win for them. A lot of pressure on them. There was an, another halfback pairing there. Tom Holmes was on loan from the Huddersfield Giants, so paired up with Dane Chisholm, um, and and that worked well for a while, didn't it? Until Tom had to go back. <laughs> yeah, look, it was great for Holmes. Holmes, he was great for us, and. More importantly, I was happy for him. He, he played there last year for the Rovers and done his knee. He done his ACL and he was out for the year. So to go back somewhere like that is a bit, you know, it's a bit eerie for a player and a bit hard to get over the the nerves. And I thought he played. If he, if he wasn't man of the match, he was up there and he had a great game for us. And um, there was again, it was a full team performance, wasn't it? There was no real individuals that stood out. Everyone bought, everyone contributed equally. And some of the defence in that first 20 minutes, I know it was nil all at the 19 minute mark when she's got an intercept, but. The defence on our trial line right, right in front of our own fans where we stopped York and we kept turning them away was something pretty special and that was probably the difference maker on the day. And I know we've talked about half-back pairings but, but let's just uh, give a shout out to de defence because defence is the platform upon which you can build which gives the space for the half-backs isn't it and, and that's been a, a key for certainly probably most of this season for Featherstone Rovers. Yeah, that was something that we as a group wanted to make sure it sort of was part of our DNA. Again, I'll come back to it, but something that we we, we pride ourselves on and um, being able to stop tries. Anyone can score them. And, and kids, when they come through, are always usually pretty talented. You say, oh, why is he good? Oh, he's a real good runner of the ball. He's got a great step or a great kick. But uh, defence takes a full full complement of people, not just one player. And attack, you can sort of manufacture a bit around a key player or two, whereas defence is a genuine sign of team and team work ethic and effort and uh, something that I think we've, we've gotten, we got better and better and better as the year went on was, was our defence and there wasn't too many where we, where, where teams got a lot of points off us, which is, which is something that pleases me as a coach. And this game, you could start to see that, that left-hand side developing uh, with Chisholm, Day and Sutcliffe too. Yeah, yeah, deadly combo, aren't they? Um, you know, this strike all over the field there and um, Briscoe at the time too, wasn't it? It's a, it's a strong edge. It's a really strong edge and 
they can all score tries and they can all ask a lot of questions. But again, the way they defended in particular on that day, I was really, really pleased with them. And Featherstone had just started to creep up the table a little bit at that point. I think that brought them to six, uh, just sniffing around the edge of those playoff places. Yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it, when you say we're creeping up and we get to sixth <laughs> and it was at summer bash time. So, um, yeah, we, we certainly... We didn't win the race at the at the start. We sort of were always building towards the back end, and um, like I said, that that was a game that summer bash, and you could really really start to see the confidence and the belief starting to grow in those boys, and 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 they could realise what they could achieve together as a group. And um, yeah, I was I was really happy for them that day. A lot of pressure on the boys. Everyone talked uh, very well documented that we'd never won at Blackpool, and. <laughs> Um, you know, hearing it all week and everyone talking about it just to put that noise out and, and remain in our own little bubble and, and play such a, a good game in such a, on such a big stage and such a big day. And um, to bring that back for the club was something that, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of for the players. And you talk about confidence and belief of the players and they took that into the next round here against Bradford Bulls. And we'll just have a look at that now. Meters out, King at dummy half to Holmes. Davis on the reverse, going for that line, he's just pulled up short, nice reverse run from Davis, it's a quick play the ball, King goes over the line for the try, it's a cheeky Cameron King try, he gets the ball away to Lockwood, Lockwood's not sure, he gets the ball to Harrison in the middle, Harrison taking it forward, good tackle comes in on him, he's looking to play the ball quickly, he does, King gets it out to Chisholm, Chisholm's going to put a kick into that corner for Luke Briscoe. He takes it. He gets it on the inside. It's a try for Featherstone Rovers for Dane Chisholm. Brilliant play by Luke Briscoe and Chisholm there. Wildy with a little kick on the last. It's a good kick and it's been chased there. What a try for Bradford. Wildy Will, is trying to get to his feet now. King to Holmes. Featherstone in a bit of space out to Davis. Davis goes through. Davis goes through the line. John Davis scores for Featherstone Rovers. What's an important try that is. It comes to Lilly. He kicks it just short of the 40, but it's not going to go anywhere near the touchline. Jack Render picks it up on his own 20. Gets it to Luke Briscoe. Briscoe's away. Briscoe gets past Crossley. Briscoe gets past Pickers Girl. Briscoe's going to race away for a try for Featherstone Rovers. Wildey's chasing him down. Briscoe gets over the try line for the Rovers. King to Cooper, to Holmes, Holmes out there to Render, he releases Carey on this right wing, Carey's in space, so decides to take the tackle, probably the sensible option as the last tackle's called, 18 metres out, Featherstone are from that line as Holmes receives the ball, he decides to pass it to Chisholm, Chisholm's going himself, Chisholm's going himself, he's going for a wonder try, Dean Chisholm, what a try that is! Oh, sidesteps left. The Rovers fans, as the last tackle's called, Cooper's on the 20 as the ball's played. It comes to Holmes. Holmes with a kick. Ryan's underneath it. It's taken by Connor Carey, though, and Connor Carey scores for the Rovers. No competition. Let me out. Last tackle called. King out to Chisholm. Chisholm with a lovely little kick for Walters to chase. Yes. Walters gets it down. Walters gets the try for Feathers. I'd say it's quite an open, open league this season. Oh, Chisholm's got it to go in for his hat trick. Oh, fabulous play by Chisholm. Bradford putting a pass out there, and Chisholm did the most. Probably into fourth spot in the championship tonight, and they're firmly making everybody sit up and take notice of them over the performances over the last four weeks that they've been putting in. And it's slowly been building as this, and Dane Chisholm's been the icing on the cake with Tom Holmes to sort of catalyse this Featherstone Rovers team that were playing well but just not getting the results into a team that's properly performing and is entertaining to watch. Entertaining to watch indeed. Uh, that was a, a great game down here at the LD Nutrition Stadium against uh, Bradford Bulls, and it really put out a statement of intent, didn't it? Yeah, winning so well and, and so convincingly. I probably defensively, I'll come back to that. Like I know we scored a lot of points on that day, but to keep Bradford to such a low score was something that, again, gave the boys more confidence, more belief. Again, that if we just keep doing, you know, what we intend to do and not worry about the opposition, we just got to take care of ourselves and look after our own backyard. And um, this is where we started to really gather some steam in that regard. 
Yeah, it took Featherstone up to fourth place in this table, so into those hallowed, hallowed playoff spots. Yeah, yeah, we didn't think we, I didn't think we were ever going to get there, to be honest. But look, um, we sort of knew what path we were heading on, and, and if we just managed to just keep going one one game at a time, we knew that that, that sort of thing would take care of itself. But um, you know, when you look back at the season that was, and we snuck in by one point into the top five, and it was Bradford who were the one point behind us, so. To win, to win a game like that here at home um, after losing that round one it still still stung a little bit that, that one point loss in round one at Bradford and to come and put that to bed was nice. After nine minutes it was Cameron King that, that set the scoring off for Featherston Rovers let's just have a, a chat about him uh, I think he said uh, he's top try scorer this season obviously I think he said at the interview on uh, Tuesday night most of them were from one yard out <laughs> and that was a, a, a typical try from him let's say. Yeah classic Kingy we call that <laughs> Um, look, he's good at it. Yeah, he's really good at it. He's got a, even though there'll be teams that'll be sitting there screaming his name out all over the tip sheet, the coach has told him, don't let King go from dummy half, and he still finds a way to do it. Um, but look, they're all important tries, aren't they? Yeah. And um, he'll, he'll be the first to acknowledge it, and Chiz as well. I think Chiz scored three on that day, but those two boys will be first to acknowledge those around him and all their teammates who get him into that area of the field or do all those little things around the the, the place that, that give him the opportunity to do that. And I think Kingy scored off the back of a, a John Davies play the ball. And, you know, if he doesn't get the quick play of the ball, Kingy doesn't score. And same with Chiz. And Chiz went off the back of a Connor Carey line break. And everyone doing everything for each other and, and recognising the hard work of each, each other is, is what these boys have done really well. Chisholm got that out trick. Do you think he had a little bit of a personal point to prove against Bradford Bulls out there? Yeah, I reckon he did. I reckon he did. But again, I, I think Chiz will, will be the first one to, to say that. Without those other 16 blokes on the field, he wouldn't have been able to, to prove his point. And um, like I said to him before that game, I remember it's not you don't need to make it personal. As soon as you make it personal and emotional, you, you do things that aren't for the better of the team. And, and as soon as you're doing that, you're not going to get the success you want. And he, he played a really good uh, part in, in what the team did on that day. And, and obviously his individual success come off the back of that, which was nice for him. Moving on then to uh, into June, uh, we had a, a strange one, the midweek fixture in the 1895 Cup over at Widnes. Um, how did you feel about that? No, yeah, not too happy. Again, something that I'm not used to. I, I think, um, look, they are, it is what it is. You've got to get on with it. But we took a, a young team over there to that game uh, with a sprinkling of sort of seasoned players and I think 10, 10 people from that Bradford game had a rest that week and or had to because we just... We could have just played too many games with such a small squad of players. I just couldn't afford to get any injuries when we just cracked it into the top four. So um, it was a good chance to give some, some guys some out-of-game time that probably needed it and a starting experience and to give some young guys an opportunity. And I thought we, we did a really good job to go over there. It was a, a, a probably a new-look new look team again for us, which is shock, shock horror, new-look team. But um, we only just lost that one. And mm. yeah, I thought we did ourselves really well. Yeah, 22-16 was the loss over at Witness on a Wednesday night. It's uh, yeah, you know, full strength they were. You know, they had, they rolled everyone out, and I know they were, they were trying to win that competition. But for us, um, you got to and me as a coach and for the club. You know, we sit down and you say, well, which way do we want to go? And we definitely went there to win that game, but at the same time, we had to manage the squad and had to manage you know different players and different things like that who needed a break. So that was probably the reasoning for that. And it was your first sight of Wellington Albert as well, uh, playing in a Featherstone shirt. Uh, he's, he's been a, a, a caught towards the back end of the season, uh, an important fixture for Featherstone. Yeah, yeah, big well. It was good for him to get, obviously he played for Witness, so to let him have a run around against his old club was nice. And he, he played really well in that game. And um, I think he really grew as a player towards the back end of the year for us and um, bought in. Bought into what we're trying to do here, which was which was something that, if he did that, he was always going to, you know, he was always going to get the individual accolades off the back of that. And then moving on to the next round, uh, that was uh, in round 16 away at Sheffield Eagles, uh, and uh, it's it's always a little bit of a strange ground to go to is Sheffield. Um, uh, it's, <laughs> but they were riding. Pretty high. They were in good form with Sheffield, but Featherstone came out with a really good victory, 38 points to 18. Yeah. yeah, another one that you look back on and you think, well, that was it's a really impressive win. It's a hard place to go and play. They beat a lot of teams there at Sheffield and they had a really good season. And when you sit back and you look at it, like the season proper, and you go through all those these teams that we had good wins against, that was that was one that probably stands out on the 
you know the um the 4G pitch and yeah. the the sheds and the, it's just a it's a unique experience going there. But look, we we managed to come away with a really strong victory that day. And um, again, if we didn't have these these big wins against these strong teams, we wouldn't have been in the playoffs and wouldn't have got to where we did. And there's a, there's a few clubs in the championship with these 4G pitches, aren't there? How, how do you feel about them? Again, something new to me. <laughs> We're not used to it. Not used to it at all. And um, something that we don't have in Oz, but. Uh, look, we, we were fortunately we didn't get too many injuries. You know, on them. I know that they're pretty renowned for having a lot of injuries on those surfaces, and I don't know how their players do it. To be honest, playing week in week out on it, it'd be tough on their body. But um, we got us, we got through injury free, and we, we had a good win there. So I, I was pleased. But um, I can I can understand why there's a bit of conjecture around it. So where that heads to in the near future, we'll see. At Featherston, they uh, beat. Witness Vikings down here uh, in round 17 took them up to third in the table. Did that one? The heady heights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, was, uh, it was. That was. That's another one that stands out for me as a as one of the most impressive wins of the year. I reckon just the way we defended in that game. I think anyone who was here could appreciate the defensive effort that the boys put in against a, a really good Witness outfit, full time. A lot of ex Super League players, or still probably good enough to be in, in Super League teams now, and. Uh, we, we defended our trial line there in that second half. I think it was for about seven sets, back to back to back, and, and to turn them away every time was something pretty special and something that, you, again, confidence and belief grows again, goes to another level because the boys just keep realising their potential, keep realising what they can do if they work hard together, put each other first and play for the team. And um, We walked off the field that day, and that was that was probably one, one game that stands out for me that I was... You know, really proud of, really proud of such a good team. You know, they're, they're a good team. Witness are a good, strong club and kept them to a really low score. Um, I don't know what the score ended four, up. Yeah. Four, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Four points. Four was the score. Yeah, and, um, and, and just the amount of defence we did on our goal line in that day was, was something pretty amazing. And, and I, I dare say that too many other teams wouldn't have been able to stand up to it. So, yeah, pretty special that one. Yeah, I seem to remember Gellin had a bit of a tough time. He was throwing everything uh, at the defence, but but yeah, we we were matching him. Yeah, we kept turning him away. I think Suddy had a great day. Yeah. Suddy Suddy was manned up on him that day, and <laughs> put him in uh, his back pocket. Yeah, he did. He did. It was, yeah, he's a, he, he took a lot of confidence out of it, which he should. He's a he's a he's a fantastic player, Suddy, and um, I, I was I was really pleased for him on a personal level on that day. And I don't usually talk about individuals too much, but to to manage Anthony Gellin like that, who's a world class player. Um, and keep him quiet and, and probably got the better of him on that day was I was really pleased for him because um, I, he, everyone knows how good a player he is he's just got to keep realising it each and every day I know he says that he struggles with confidence but he's, he's got no need to he's a, he's a definitely he's a super league he's a super league player day in day out and I'm sure he's going to have a, a long and fantastic career I'm sure he is um, Going to the week after that, uh, a game against Barrow, um, a team that were really, really fighting for their championship future, and uh, it, it probably told did that game. And, and Featherstone uh, surprisingly uh, were defeated by Barrow in that game. Yeah, yeah, that was another tough loss. Again, I think people will say, "Oh, we shouldn't lose to Barrow," but look, fair play to them. They got some got some high quality players, and they their, their good players really stood up and did a good job. Um, you know, I remember Holmes he getting hurt. He got a crusher in the first five minutes, and sort of put him out of action for for majority of the game. And he battled on, but it could just tell he wasn't right, quite right. Um, and and it was probably just a game where, when you look back, and and people probably don't realise because they just think it you got to win everything and and every every game, especially here at home, we do set out to win them. But you look at those games that we just went through, and and you got. You got Bradford, you got Widnes, you got Sheffield away, and so many games we're up against these top four and five teams, and you're throwing everything into it to beat them, and then you come here and Barrow, and we probably just weren't at our best. That was probably the way you could put it. We weren't at our best. I reckon they definitely were. Full credit to them. Take nothing away from them. I thought they played really well, um, but yeah, definitely a, a reality check for us in terms of where we were at and. Um, again, I don't think we didn't try hard. I just, think, I just, I just think a few things didn't quite go our way that day, and um, we let ourselves down with little things like discipline and things like that. But you got to go through the tough times to to come out the other side and get through the good ones. 
And then going on to the next round, it was uh, an away fixture at Halifax, the Featherstone's uh, traditional rivals in the championship in, in recent years. Uh, came out with a, a, an error victory, 24 points to 18, a hard-fought victory there. So, so that must have been good to get, to get back on the winning streak again. Yeah, yeah. It's not what you do, it's how you react. And it's what you do next that will define you. That's what we always speak about with the, with the group. And, um, you know, to come out and win away from home where, you know, we probably struggled there in the past as a club. It's been a hard place to go and play. And a lot of teams struggle to go there uh, at their home ground. So um, to bounce back after playing, you know, on being such a high and then and hitting such a low there with a home loss to Barrow, to, to bounce back and have a really strong win. It's just a true test of their character, of the team's character and, and, and who we truly are. And I think that, that put a lot to bed. A lot of questions were raised after that game, that Barrow game. And um, again, we, we, we always stay in our little bubble. We don't listen to external noises because people are always going to have their say. There's a lot of keyboard jockeys out there that want to uh, that want to, that want to bag the players out or... or I don't care if they bag me out, Joe. They can say what they want about me. I don't really care. I care about my team. I care about the club. And all I want for them to do, all I want what's best for them, and that's all these players really want. No one ever sets out to lose a game. So to shut a lot of people up was, was quite nice and refreshing. <laughs>